अखंडम सच्चिदानंदम अवांग मनस गोचरम आत्मानम अखिलाधारम आश्रय भीष्ट सिद्ध I take refuge in the self the indivisible the existence consciousness bliss absolute beyond the reach of words and thought and the substratum of all for the attainment of my cherished desire So we are on text number 137 137 um we're talking about superimposition and desuperimposition the sanskrit words for that we remember where uh, adhyaropa apavada adhyaropa is superimposition and apavada is desuperimposition it this is a, a portion which we started long back if you recall in text number 32 in text number 32 a long time back if you refer back you will see to see the um, rope which is not a snake to make a mistake and to see it as a snake that is called adhyaropa superimposition to see what is not there or to think of something which is not that shankaracharya calls it atasmin tad buddhi what is not there you see there or what is not there you think that is there just like um, a movie for example it you see lots of stuff there and yet there's only light and a screen similarly in a dream you see lots of people and places but all that is there is the dreaming mind and uh, the classic example of a rope which you see as which one makes a mistake and thinks that it's a snake uh, but what is there is the rope only that which is not a snake to see that as a snake to make a, mis- a mistake about it an error about it that's called superimposition the word for it is adhyaropa and all of that which did till now was to show how the entire universe which we experience is a superimposition on the reality which is brahman the reality which is a rope is seen as a snake by mistake the reality which is brahman is experienced as the universe by an error there the error is caused by not knowing the rope uh, and we make a mistake about this uh, snake here the error is caused by not knowing brahman the ultimate reality and we all know why that happens all of that we we studied maya with its two functions uh, projecting power and veiling power and the projecting power leads to the manifestation of the entire universe and so the, the manifestation of the entire universe up to the 14 worlds and the body and the mind and and our samsara which we see this is the limit of superimposition this is what we have seen the whole samsara is superimposed on brahman just as a snake is superimposed on um, a rope superimpose is just a fancy philosophical way of saying the rope is mistaken for a snake brahman is mistaken for this universe now correction we're going to begin a correction why at all are we doing this because this is the method of teaching remember at the very beginning we were told that the master the student goes to the master and says uh, how do i become enlightened how do i become free from the sufferings of samsara and the master teaches uh, vedanta and we were told how does the master teach vedanta the master teaches by the method of superimposition and desuperimposition adhyaropa apavada and that's what's going on that's why the method of super, what what is called superimposition was talked about till now and now they're going to talk about desuperimposition the error has been displayed now now the error is going to be corrected we are in the the dream we are in the midst of the dream now we're going to wake up all right so that is called desuperimposition um let us see we shall see desuperimposition basically um let's read first and then we i'll come back to it text number 137 अपवादो नाम रज्जुविवत्त सर्प से रज्जुमात्रवत् वस्तु विवत्त से अवस्तु न अज्ञानादेह प्रपंच से वस्तुमात्रत्व 
as a snake falsely perceived in the rope is ultimately found out to be nothing but the rope similarly the world of unreal things beginning with ignorance superimposed upon the reality is realized at the end to be nothing but brahman this is known as desuperimposition apavada um what is going on underneath is that um, you can think of it as cause and effect if you think of the rope as a cause of the manifestation of the snake or the rope as a cause of the error uh, which we which is the snake it's not really a snake it's an error and what's the cause of that error what what causes what is it really it's really a rope so the material the substance the reality behind is called the cause in fact it's more specifically material cause in sanskrit karana more specifically upadana karana the material cause is the rope and uh, the effect in sanskrit karyam the effect is the snake similarly um brahman is the cause and the effect is this universe now what this uh, this desuperimposition apavada does is this it it negates it removes uh, it destroys our ignorance about the reality and negates the effect i'll repeat that it negates the effect it says there is no snake it negates the effect there is no snake what you consider to be snake is an is an illusion is an is a mistake is an error there is no universe what you consider to be jagat this universe is an appearance is not the reality so this, what is it negating it is negating the superimposition it is negating the effect are you with me the universe is the karyam effect snake is the karyam um, the effect that is negated negated means it's not real we realize it's not real having negated the karyam what happens next is uh, that see how do you and how is the karyam negated what do you mean by negating negating here would mean realizing that it, there is nothing here except the karanam the cause uh, just as the cause the rope is only there uh, there is no effect called a snake once you realize that you have negated the snake the cause the dreamer only is there there is no dream world and person and event only the dreaming mind is there so the only the cause is there not the effect the effect is thus negated now when you do that when you negate the effect when you negate the karyam effect what happens to the cause nothing happens to it but its causality is lost you see you cannot call it a cause anymore you are saying that it's a snake then uh, why why is it there because of the rope and our ignorance of the rope rope our ignorance of the rope pushes it forward or or projects it as a snake fine now next we desuperimpose we correct the error we say there is no snake it's not a snake it is nothing but the cause which is the rope it's the rope alone the cause alone is there effect is not there but if the effect is not there why are you calling it a cause if the effect the snake is not there why are you calling the rope a cause the rope is not a cause the rope is the reality but it's not a cause anymore what what is it a cause of because it did not actually cause anything so the causality of the cause is lost i will repeat that by this process of correction of the error what happens is first you negate the effect negate the effect means you realize there is no effect it is only the cause there is no snake it is only the rope but having said there is no snake then the rope as a cause of the snake that you have to give up you cannot say that the rope is a cause of the snake why am i going like this uh, making it complicated because what i'm trying to say is once you negate the world it is an appearance it's mithya it's maya then what is the cause of this world brahman uh, the ultimate reality brahman is the cause of the world uh, it, so we realize it is brahman alone it's not the world but then if it's brahman alone and not the world then you cannot say brahman is the cause of the world 
So it is Brahman, uh, Brahman and Brahman alone. Existence, consciousness, bliss alone, not as the cause of anything. Karya, Karana, Vilakshana, Brahma. It's a very powerful phrase. Brahman, which transcends both cause and effect. Brahman transcending causality. All this sounds very abstract and um, dry. It has a tremendous implication. What is the implication? In this exchange, poor Ishwara has disappeared. God is the cause of the universe. Saguna Brahman. The moment you say Brahman is not a cause, then you have to say Brahman is not God. You have to say Brahman is only Brahman, existence, consciousness, place. It's Godhood is lost. Not that Brahman disappears. The rope remains the rope, but rope as a cause of the snake, that is gone. Rope is not a cause of the snake. Brahman remains as Brahman, but a Brahman as the cause of the universe, that is lost. So this, uh, this is what is going on underneath all this superimposition and de-superimposition. One more point I want to make here. Uh, here is introduced the term vivarta. So I want to talk about vivarta and parinama, two very important terms in Vedanta, in Advaita Vedanta. It, it relates to causality, cause and effect. So what is vivarta and what is parinama? When the cause is transformed into the effect, this is called parinama, transformation of the cause into the effect. It's one kind of causality. Transformation of the cause into the effect. Example, the, um, cur the milk becomes curd or yogurt. It's transformed. Actually, it is a process. The milk is no longer milk. It becomes yogurt. Or the seed is transformed into the seedling, the sapling. Seed is gone. Now it is a sapling. That's, that's called parinama. An actual transformation of cause into effect. Seed, cause, effect, sapling. Milk cause, effect is yogurt. And by here, by cause, I mean the material cause, upadana karana. In contrast, vivarta, vivarta means apparent transformation. Apparent transformation. It means the cause appears as the effect, is not actually does not become the effect. Rope and snake. It is not that the rope is actually transformed into a snake. Not that the rope has gone and there is a snake. No. Rope and, uh, rope and snake. Uh, the desert and the water in the mirage. The water in the mirage is an appearance. It's not that the dry desert has suddenly become watery. No. It's still the desert. It's sand. But it it's, look, looks like a mirage. That is called vivarta. Dream is vivarta. The mind, dreamer's mind, actually does not become people and places and activities. It only appears like that. Vivarta. Movie, cinema, vivarta. The screen does not actually become people and, you know, uh, car chases and monsters. and No, it is just appears like that. It's called vivarta. So, um, so this is... Uh, now, Brahman as this universe, is it parinama or is it vivarta? Is it like milk becoming yogurt, seed becoming a sapling? This is called parinama. Is Brahman transformed into this universe? Or is it vivarta? Is it like rope and snake? Is Brahman appearing as this universe? So Brahman is appearing as this universe. This is the Advaita Vedanta's big claim. It's not that Brahman, the ultimate reality, has been transformed into the universe. It is not that God has become the universe. If you say God has become the universe, it's a bit like Spinoza. Spinoza's pantheism. Spinoza said that the absolute reality appears as this universe. It, it, this is somewhat, this is called pantheism, that God becomes the universe. But Advaita Vedanta is not that. Advaita Vedanta does not say that Brahman becomes the universe. Advaita Vedanta says Brahman appears as the universe. The rope appears as the snake. The desert appears as the mirage water. The dreamer appears as all the elements in the dream. The movie screen appears as the, um, as the cinema. 
no actual transformation. Now, what difference does it make? Number of difference. First and most important of all, um, if there is no actual transformation, then by an act of knowledge, by correction, you can go back from the effect to the cause. I'll repeat. If there is no actual transformation, by, the, by knowledge, by realizing what it is, you can go back from the effect to the cause. If there's no actual transformation, you can go back from the mirage water to the actual desert. You realize, oh, it's only a mirage. Knowledge itself will transform that apparent water into the real desert. Waking up, trapped in a dream, a tiger is chasing you in a forest. Now, how do you go back to the reality? Wake up. Just by waking up, tiger, forest, everything will disappear and you sit up in your bed. What has happened? You have gone back from an appearance to the reality. Movie, you don't even have to go back. You always, you're always aware that the movie, what is appearing is not ultimately real. It, these are all like pictures on a screen. So that very act of knowledge, knowing that it is a movie, takes you back from the tragedy or the comedy in the, in the movie to the reality that these are pictures in a screen. This is possible, why? This is possible because it is vivatta. It is an apparent transformation. If it was a real transformation, for example, milk has become curd. Now, however much you say that curd is milk, curd is milk, curd is milk, it will never become milk. It is curd, it is yogurt. Seed has germinated into a sapling. If you say, no, it is the seed, it is the seed. It is not a sapling. It will never go back. It is a sapling. But if it is a snake, by mistake, you have seen a rope as a snake. If you say that, no, it is not a snake, it is a rope, you will notice the rope. You will go back. From the error to the reality, you can go back by an act of knowledge, by a correction. From a dream to the waking, you can go back by waking up. Knowledge can take you back from the effect to the cause. Knowledge can take you back from the effect to the cause if it is vivarta, not if it is parinama. No amount of knowledge will take you back from yogurt to the milk or from the sapling to the seed. It's already actually transformed. Related to this, one more point. You know, in Advaita Vedanta, we talk about levels of reality. So ultimate reality, paramarthika, the absolute reality, which is only Brahman. And then there is the transactional reality called Vavaharika reality, which is this. You're sitting here and you're listening to Vedanta and all of that. Uh, you are our bodies and minds. The Vavaharika reality, which we talked about, the superimposition, we saw this entire universe. It's a transactional reality where we eat, walk and talk. We go to jobs and we get COVID and suffer and recover. All of that is transactional reality. Vyavaharika. And there is a lower level of reality called Pratibhasika reality. Errors, dreams, when you mistake a rope for a snake, when you see a movie, when you see, read a fiction like, like a storybook, when you see a, a dream or a mirage, this is called Pratibhasika. Illusion, fiction, error. So now we have got three levels. Paramarthika, absolute. Example, only one example is there, Brahman, existence, consciousness, place. That's the only reality. That's the absolute reality, which is really real. <laughs> so to put it that way. In between is, next to it is transactional reality. What we now consider to be our reality, this waking world. This waking world is transactional reality, is Vebaharika Satyam. And then there is the Pratibhasika Satyam, the apparent world of errors, illusions, dreams. Why am I bringing this up? Now, connected to Vivarta and Parinama. If causality is Parinama, effect, cause is transformed into effect. Both are at the same level of reality. Milk is transformed into yogurt. Milk and yogurt both are Vyavaharika, transactional reality. Um, or a seed is transformed into a plant. Both are at the level of transactional reality, Vyavaharika. But if it is a case of Vivarta, the cause and the effect are not at the same level of reality. 
the cause is a higher reality or a more fundamental reality, deeper reality, and the effect is a lower reality. So, for example, snake and rope. Rope, vyavaharika. Snake, pratibhasika. Waking and dreaming. Waking, vyavaharika. The objects in the dream, the contents of the dream, pratibhasika. So, to repeat again, parinama, cause and effect both are at the same level of reality. And um, the vivatta, cause and effect are different levels of reality. Cause is always of a higher level of reality. The desert is a real desert. And the water you see in the desert is an appearance, is a fiction, I mean, is an illusion. The rope is a real rope. Vyavaharika. And the snake you see is Pratibhasika. So, so what? Here. Because this universe is um, Vivarta of Brahman, then Brahman is of a higher level of reality than this universe. They are not at the same level of uh, reality. Brahman is uh, the, um, the, the Paramarthika Satyam, the absolute level. And its appearance the, the vivarta, vivarta means appearance. Its appearance is vyavaharika satyam, this world. That is connected to this idea that it can be corrected by knowledge. If the two things are at two different levels of reality, you can correct it by one act of knowledge. The pratibhasika snake can be dissolved back, merged back into the vyavaharika rope by realizing it is not a snake, it's a rope. The Pratibhasika mirage water can be dissolved back into the desert sand by realizing there is no water. The, the Vavaharika Jagat can be dissolved back into Brahman by realizing it is Brahman, it's not a world. So this realization of the effect is nothing but the cause. This is called Apavada. Realization that the effect is nothing but the cause. Just by knowledge you realize this. It's apavada. It's possible only for vivatta. If it is a, an appearance. If the world is an appearance of Brahman. If the snake is an appearance of a rope. If it's a real snake, no, no amount of shouting it's a rope will help you. Better run. This is going to bite you then. So if it's a real world, no amount of Vedantic inquiry will help you. It's only because the world is said to be an appearance in existence, consciousness, bliss, then knowledge will help you. Knowledge will make you realize it is Brahman and Brahman alone. By knowledge you can become free. Otherwise by knowledge you cannot become free. Error, if, it, if the world is an error, then knowledge about the reality will set you free from samsara. If the world is reality, then no knowledge, even knowledge about the reality of God or whatever can set you free. See how it is all connected. The Brahma Sutra starts with Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Hence, therefore, an inquiry into Brahman. An inquiry into Brahman. What is Vedanta? It's an inquiry into Brahman, the absolute reality. Why an inquiry? What does an inquiry do? An inquiry will only produce knowledge. Any inquiry, any inquiry produces knowledge, right? Inquiry means knowledge. What, what is the product of, what is the result of any inquiry? Knowledge. Any investigation? Knowledge. How will that help? If I inquire into Brahman, how will that help? If you inquire into Brahman, the knowledge of Brahman will remove samsara, will set you free from suffering. The whole goal of spiritual life will be served by uh, knowledge of Brahman. And knowledge of Brahman comes by an inquiry into Brahman. And therefore, Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Hence, therefore, an inquiry into Brahman. But notice what is underlying. If you open up the box, what are the assumptions inside? The assumption is that it is vivarta. The universe, samsara, is a vivarta of Brahman, an appearance of Brahman. If it were not an appearance of Brahman, no amount of knowledge would help you. I mean, it would help, but then you would have to do something about it after that. Just knowledge itself will not help you. And no amount of inquiry will be ultimately useful. 
inquiry, knowledge will ultimately you have to do something about it. Maybe the grace of God or something will be necessary. Then only you can get freedom and things like that. Or many problems, complications will ensue. But by knowledge of the reality, I'm free from suffering. I'm free of samsara is possible only if samsara is an appearance, a vivatta of Brahman. Now, if you look at uh, what was said in the definition of apavada. Apavado nama. What is apavada? Apavada is to be defined. The superimposition is to be defined as rajju vivartasya sarpasya. The sarpa, snake, which is a vivartha, an apparent transformation of the rope. See, vivartha. What is the alternative? Parinama. You can never say yogurt, which is the, which is the transformation of the milk, can be, you know, you can recover the milk by realizing it is milk. It's impossible. So yogurt is gone. I mean, milk is gone. Yogurt is there now. But it is Raju Vivartasya Sarpasya means the rope. Rope is still there. Even when you are seeing, apparently seeing a snake, the rope is still there. When you are apparently seeing the world, Brahman is still there. Raju Vivartasya Sarpasya Raju Matratvat Just like the snake is nothing other than the rope. Rajju matra means rope only. Are you following? The snake is rope only. If it's an apparent snake, if it's a false snake, then it's a rope only. Like that. It's an example. Remember, it's had nothing to do with snakes and ropes. It's an example. Like that. Vastu vivartasya avastunaha. Um, that the, the unreal appearance, avastu which is an appearance of the reality, vastu. So what is an unreal vastu? What is an uh, unreal uh, appearance? Agyanade prapanchasya. Entire universe, going all the way back to maya. Prapancha, universe. What is the universe? We read about it. 14 worlds, multiple universes, with all living beings, and their objects of experience, their sufferings and enjoyments. Uh, and um, with, with their physical body and the subtle body and the causal body, all going back to Maya, all of it is like the snake appearing in what is the reality? Just like the rope, Vastu Matratvam, only Brahman. Brahm, uh, Brahman is the only reality. Satchidaran, the existence consciousness bliss. Just as the snake remains as nothing other than the rope, the entire universe remains as nothing other than Brahman. This is called uh, apavada, the superimposition. This is going to happen now. We are going to wipe out the entire universe. Don't be scared, only by an act of knowledge. Also remember one thing. There are examples of different kinds. Once you correct the error of a snake and see that it's a rope, you actually don't see the snake anymore. But once an enlightened person corrects the error of the universe, Jagat, and realizes it's all Brahman, still one sees the universe. The enlightened person also sees people and objects and animals and plants and sky and earth, all of it. Once you correct um, the example, so, so aren't there different examples? Yeah, there are better examples. So for example, uh, a mirage water. Once you correct that it's not a mirage, it's not water, it's a mirage, it's still just the sand and the air shimmering uh, because of the heat and there's an illusion. When you go near it, you see it's just sand and, and air shimmering on it. But then what happens? When you go further away from a distance, when you look back upon it, what, is, what does it look like? Water. Water. Swami Vivekananda had this example. In Rajasthan, in the deserts of Rajasthan, as he was walking, he was very thirsty and he saw this water. He rushed towards it to drink it and he saw it is just the desert sand. And he realized, oh, this is the mirage which we have been told about. He starts walking. And but then later when he looks back, he sees the same water again. But this is the difference. It no longer has the same hold on him anymore. Similarly, an enlightened person will still see the same world, but it no longer has any hold upon, uh, upon the enlightened person. It, it does not exert the power of pain and misery upon the enlightened person. Neither temptation nor terror from this world of appearance. This is what happens in an enlightened person. 
there are ex other examples also blue sky so we thought that the sky is blue but then we go to school and the physics teacher uh, disenchants us by telling us no it's just light being scattered uh, in the atmosphere that's why the sky looks blue but then the, the the child goes outside the classroom and looks at the sky what does it look like it looks blue similarly but now the child knows it's not blue actually and at no point is any anywhere the space become blue similarly brahman looks as like the world to us and to the enlightened person also but we do not realize what brahman is and we interact it with it as the world as objects and people and good and bad and suffering and pain and misery and pleasure all of that swami vivekananda says things are dead in themselves things are dead in themselves means they are names and forms only there's no reality in them and then he says but we breed life into them then we run away from them or run towards them so this is called um adhyaropa apavada um so like the, it's just like the blue sky even after realizing this it will still look blue for the enlightened person but the enlightened person knows it's not blue it is it's just sky is colorless similarly it's not a universe it is brahman now he gives a quotation to make his point 138 taduktam satatvato anyatha pratha vikara it altering into another substance while vivarta is only only an apparent modification so satatva to anyatha pratha vikara ityudi udiritha vikara or parinama is what when the cause actually in reality is transformed into the effect like milk into yogurt atatva to anyatha pratha pratha means appearance pratha means appearance tatva to in reality atatva to not in reality atatva to anyatha pratha appearance as anyatha means as something else appearance is something else but though not in reality is called vivarta so we studied the difference between parinama and vivarta rope appears as a snake but not in reality not in reality means rope has not really become a snake um, milk appears as yogurt in reality it has been transformed into yogurt all right so now the definition of apavada the superimposition has been given so what's going to happen we are going to see this universe as it really is what is it really brahman we are going to put this universe through the process of apavada the superimposition what will emerge at the end of it brahman what are we going to put into that machine of the superimposition universe universe will be processed and brought back to brahman to realize that it is brahman by the entire process is a process of knowledge you are not actually going to go out and smash the universe into bits and pieces and make brahman out of it or something see there are schools of vedanta the dualistic schools they say brahman existed in the beginning and then by transformation actually brahman or a part of brahman or a power of brahman actually became this universe that is called parinama so many of the dualistic schools they so if brahman actually becomes the universe then the universe is also real brahman is real brahman is becoming the universe the universe is also real and then at the end of the universe when pralaya is there dissolution then the universe will be gone and brahman alone will exist that is the dualistic view the non dualistic view advaitic view is brahman alone existed in the beginning and in the end brahman alone will exist in between brahman alone exists only thing is it appears as this universe why does it appear as this universe why is it experienced as this universe because of superimposition how do we get rid of the superimposition by knowledge by the superimposition now this this the superimposition apavada which will happen it will happen in stages uh, why in stages remember all the superimposition we went through happened in stages 
Do you remember? Pure consciousness, existence, consciousness, bliss. The only reality was to reality. Then what was introduced? Maya. So it became that reality plus Maya. What is that called? Reality plus Maya, that, that ultimate reality plus Maya or limited by Maya? Ishwara, Saguna Brahman. And then what happened? Um, that Maya produced the five subtle elements. You know, the subtle sky and air and fire and water and whatever. And then what happened? Those subtle elements combined to form the subtle bodies. What are subtle bodies? Mind, intellect, memory, all of that. The powers of perception, the powers of doing life itself. The um, um, Vijnana Maya Kosha, Mano Maya Kosha and Prana Maya Kosha. And then what happened? The subtle elements, another stage. Subtle elements combined with each other to produce the gross elements, the five elements which, by which this physical universe is made. We remember the Panchikarana, one part of each combining with the other four, four parts of fire, water, space, the five-fold mixture. It was a mixture of the quintuplication we talked, we called it. So the, the becoming five-fold. The four, uh, one element mixing with parts of the other four elements and producing the five gross elements. And the five gross elements made what? The physical bodies, Annamaya Kosha of all of us, and these worlds, and these objects. So multiple stages of superimposition, and those will be reversed. So he starts from the most obvious. Where have we come right now? Here we are with physical bodies, living in this physical universe. Let's start there. Let's see. What will happen? We'll see what will happen now. But this is much faster. Um, th that superimposition, building that universe took us months. Here in a matter of minutes, we are going to wake up from the dream. The dream may be very complicated, but to wake up from it is very easy. The movie may be most complicated, but to switch up the movie is pr pretty fast. Uh, so this is what we will see. 139. Tathahi etad bhogayatanam chatur vidha sakalasthula sharira jatam Bhogya rupa anna panadikam etad ayatana bhuta bhuradi chaturdasha bhuvanani etad ayatana bhutam brahmandam chaita sarvam etesham karana rupam um, panchikrita bhuta matram bhavati. To illustrate the four kinds of physical bodies, which are the seats of enjoyment, the different kinds of food and drink, etc., which are the objects of enjoyment. The 14 pla planes such as Bhur, etc., which con contain them, and the universe, Brahmanda, which contains these planes, all these are reduced to their causes, the five gross elements. That was pretty fast. <laughs> what it does is everything that you see here, right now, where we are right now, this physical universe, and the multiple universes like this, all of it is nothing but matter. Nothing but matter. The five elements. Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apa, Prithivi. That's it. Everything here. You say, what about space? Akasha, space. That's also included. Uh, all energy, all, um, you know, space, time, energy, all of it is just matter. So, Tathahi, to explain further. Etad Bhogayatanam. These seats of in experience, bhoga means how we experience pleasure and pain. What are they? Bodies. And remember, Chaturvedha, four kinds of bodies. We had a very sketchy and uh, sort of bare bones biology. Um, it was shown to us. Four kinds of bodies. Stula Shariram, physical bodies. Jatam, collection. I'm just giving you the Sanskrit. Bhogya Rupa Annapanadikam. And the objects which they experience. What, what, what do we experience with these bodies? Food, drink, um, all of those things. The physical things which we, we, we enjoy or suffer from. All of them. And they are, where do they exist? They etadayatana bhutam. Bhuradi chaturdasha bhuvanani. The 14 worlds, the universes, multiple universes. Etadayatana bhutam brahmandam. The, you can call it the multiverse in modern cosmology. The con entire physical reality containing, containing all of this, all space, time, planets, stars, galaxies, and uh, you know, black holes and super strings and whatnot. All of that is what? 
it's nothing but its cause, its material cause are the five elements. So we have gone, remember, we have gone from the uh, effect to the cause. The effect is this physical universe and the material cause of all of that is just five elements. This itself actually removes most of our problems. Our entire level of problems is at, at our society. This physical body, its uh, illness. Just look at it from this perspective. My physical body and the coronavirus is basically all of them are just matter. So for me, if I'm identified with this physical body, then the coronavirus is an enemy for me. But if you're identified with matter, you know, sky and earth and fire and wind and water, then the coronavirus is also you. This physical body is also you. It shouldn't matter to you. So all of this is just matter, panchabhuta, the five elements, all of it. That's why it's called prapancha, prakrishtena pancha, the, the combinations or the elaborations of five. What are the five? The five elements. The, just matter, all of it is just an ocean of matter. First stage, then 140. Etani shabdadi vishaya sahitani panchikritani bhutani sukshma shari rajatam chaitan chaita sarva mete sham karana rupam apanchikrita bhuta matram bhavati. These five gross elements, together with the five objects such as sound, etc., and the subtle bodies, all these are reduced to their cause, the uncompounded elements. Next stop in our journey, journey, journey back from universe to Brahman. The next stop is. This, all these five elements, which makes this physical universe, all these five gross elements, plus the subtle bodies, our minds, intellects. You know, do you remember subtle body has 17 parts? We, we read about it. Five sense organs, the powers. The five motor organs, the powers associated with them. The five pranas and the uh, intellect and the mind, buddhi and manas. Um, or 19 parts, if you make Mana buddhi chitta hankara. I'm moving fast. If you are confused, just refer back. We have done all of this earlier. All of these, the five gross elements, the entire physical universe is nothing but the five gross elements. The five gross elements themselves plus the subtle universe. Subtle universe means life and the mind and intellect and memory and all of that is nothing but the five subtle elements. Pancha Sukshma Bhuta, the Pancha Tanmatra. I hope these are not unfamiliar terms. Pancha Tanmatra, Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apa, Prithivi. Space, uh, wind, fire, water, and earth. Uh, these are this is a sort of primitive cosmology. So that is what it is. All of it is just that. And he says, what, are, what is that? Five gross elements, five objects. Each of these gross elements has properties. What are the properties? Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, Sparsha. That means form. Form is the property of fire element. Uh, rasa, taste, is the property of the water element. Uh, Gandha, is, uh, smell, is the property of the earth element. Um, Shabda, sound, is the property of the um, space element and so on. So all these properties, plus these subtle bodies, which we, our subtle bodies, which we are experiencing right now, they're all made of five subtle elements, nothing more. It's just combinations of those which appear as these five subtle elements. Next stop. So what are these five subtle elements? So right now, where are we? We are now, we have reduced the entire universe to its subtle components, just the five subtle elements, that's it. Although actually you have not physically done anything to the universe, it's still around you if you look at it, but it's just five subtle elements. And these things can actually be experienced. Um, Swami Sarvagatananda Ji, who was in Boston, <coughs> he told this uh, to a friend of mine. Uh, he said that in, in Sargachi, he had gone to his guru, Swami Akhandananda Ji, so, uh, uh, and Akhandananda ji, he went to Akhandananda ji's room and Akhandananda ji told him to meditate. And um, so, 
Sarvagatan ji. So earlier he had already taken Mantra Diksha from Swami Akhandan ji. I had made a mistake many years, um, many months ago, I told the same story. I thought he did not take Mantra Diksha from Akhandan ji, but actually he did take Mantra Diksha. But on this occasion, um, in Sargachi Ashram, Swami Sarvagatan ji, who was a young uh, Brahmachari at that time, he sat in the room of Swami Akhandananda ji. And Akhandananda ji told him to meditate. After some time, Swami Akhandananda asked Sarvagatan ji, what do you see? He said that um, this, I think this entire universe is just ideas. He said, meditate further. After some time, he asked, what do you, what do you see? I see that everything is just consciousness. Now notice, physical universe becomes just ideas. What has happened? From the physical to the subtle, from the gross to the subtle, and from the subtle to the consciousness level. And then, number 141, text number 141. Etani sattvadi guna sahitani apanchi kritani utpatti vitkramena etat karana bhuta agyan upahita chaitanya matram bhavati. The five subtle elements together with sattva rajastamas are nothing but maya with consciousness. Now what, is, what has been said here? The five elements, five subtle elements. This is Vipatti Kramena in the reverse order of their creation. So here is the reference is to the Taittiri Upanishad. In the Brahmananda Valley of the Taittiri Upanishad, it is said uh, how these subtle elements came. Tasmadva etasmad atmana akasha sambhuta akasha dvayo vayo ragnir agnir apa adhya prithivi. So from that Atman, that ultimate reality, emerges Akasha. In between, of course, is Maya, which is not mentioned. So emerges Akasha. From Akasha, Akasha is space. From Akasha, Vayu, which is wind. From uh, Vayu, Agni, which is fire. From uh, Agni, Apa, which is water. And from Apa, Prithivi, which is earth. These have emerged. These are the five subtle elements. Now he's saying in reverse order, earth, is nothing but uh, water. Water is nothing but fire. Fire is nothing but wind. Wind is nothing but space. Space itself is nothing but, he says, agya, is maya, basically. And what is maya? We, we read, remember, maya is trigunatmikam, sattva rajas tamas. So sattva rajas tamas has manifested as all these five elements. All the, these five elements are reduced to nothing but maya, sattva rajas tamas. But Maya has no existence apart from existence. Brahman is existence itself. So Maya plus Brahman, which is God, Ishwara, Saguna Brahman, we have merged it back into the cause of the universe. Look at the three stops we have made on the way. First stop was this physical, take everything in this physical universe and see that they are all just matter, five elements. The second stop was take those five gross elements and also notice that the mind and intellect and all and life, prana and all of that, there's nothing but the five subtle elements. Then take those five subtle elements and see that there's nothing but maya. And maya, of course, does not exist without Brahman. So maya and Brahman together, which is none, nothing other than Ishwara or God. The entire universe is nothing other than God. Ajnana Upahita Chaitanyam. Ajnana Upeta Chaitanyam, consciousness associated with ignorance. This ignorance is Maya. Then, I'm moving very fast. We're going, we are on, on a fast track to Brahman. Then what about God? So this is what, what is, it's all come down to, that everything is God? No. Now we're going to let go of poor God also. God is going to be sacrificed next. 142. Etad agyanam agyana upahita chaitanyam cha ishwaradikam etad adhara bhuta anupahita chaitanya rupam turiyam brahma matram bhavati. Wonderful. This ignorance and the consciousness associated with it, such as Ishwara, etc., are resolved into the transcendent Brahman unassociated with ignorance, which is the substratum of them all. So Eta, this, this which Maya, which consciousness, Ishwara, God, is 
nothing other than the ultimate reality brahman so ishwar adikam this means ishwar ishwar etc ishwar etc means consciousness associated with maya is called ishwar a god consciousness associated with maya and the subtle universe is called uh, hiranyagarbha the cosmic mind consciousness associated with maya and the subtle universe and the physical universe is called virat the cosmic person which is what arjuna saw in, in the 11th chapter of the bhagavad gita so this this consciousness you can call it reflected consciousness or or um, consciousness with upadhis with association is con- not consciousness in itself consciousness limited by maya consciousness limited by maya plus subtle universe consciousness limited by maya plus subtle universe plus gross universe the first one is ishwara second one is hiranyagarbha the third one is uh, virat at the cosmic level and also you can put in at the individual level consciousness associated with the causal body pragya remember mandukya upanishad mandukya karika consciousness associated with subtle body pragya you say what is all this they are talking about our deep sleep experience what you are in your deep sleep that is consciousness associated with individual ignorance causal body consciousness or in the terms of koshas consciousness associated with anandamaya kosha then consciousness associated with causal body and subtle body what you experience in your dreams what is that called taijasa taijasa consciousness associated with the causal body subtle body and this physical body what you are right now what is it called vishwa in the mandukya terms vishwa taijasa pragya at the individual level and virat hiranyagarbha ishwara at the cosmic level what are they they are nothing other than pure consciousness itself chaitanya matram the snake is nothing other than the rope there is nothing other going nothing else going on there except that existence consciousness place that is what is called it is saying that um adhara bhuta the foundation this the reality of all of them anupahita chaitanyam consciousness not associated with maya that consciousness what is that turiyam fourth why fourth ishwara hiranyagarbha virat three turiya is the fourth pragya taijasa vishwa three turiya is the fourth turiya is the ultimate reality what is that turiya brahma matram existence alone consciousness alone bliss alone unlimited existence consciousness bliss satyam gyanam anantam brahma bhavati that is the only reality you say oh yeah then it will be the only reality not then right now just as right now the so called snake is nothing but the rope right now the so called universe is nothing but brahman and that brahman is you you are that brahman so no the universe is brahman fine it's like a physics lesson cosmology lesson no no not at all like that it's you you are that brahman aham brahmasmi in vivek chudamani it is you know the instruction is given to the student so what do i do now with this knowledge there is a jati niti kula gotra um uh, 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 duragam um nama roopa nama roopa dosha guna varjitam hmm. uh, then desha kala vishaya ati vart ati vartte ati vart अतिवर्तयत ब्रह्मतत्वमसि भावयात्मनि दैट व्हिच इज बियॉन्ड टाइम बियॉन्ड स्पेस बियॉन्ड ऑब्जेक्ट बियॉन्ड टाइम स्पेस एंड ऑब्जेक्ट दैट मींस नॉट लिमिटेड बाय टाइम नॉट लिमिटेड बाय स्पेस नॉट लिमिटेड टू बीइंग पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जेक्ट्स व्हाट इज दैट 
only existence awareness only that brahma brahma tattvamasi you are that brahman meditate on this so this is the end of de superimposition apavada so we have done adhyaropa apavada superimposition de superimposition there is one existence consciousness place because of maya it appears as the subtle universe our thoughts feelings emotions all of that and appears further as this physical universe when you dismiss the physical universe and the subtle universe and the causal maya what remains was what was there at the beginning existence consciousness place that thou art brahma tattvamasi you are that brahman not only the reality of this particular body and mind you're the reality of the entire universe that brahman you are um so this is the end of superimposition de superimposition now what now vedanta can start <laughs> all of this was just preliminary to get you ready for the actual vedanta which is going to start next what is what is that tattvam asi that thou art Brahm, vedanta advaita vedanta can be summarized in one sentence that thou art he will say now now you are ready to understand that thou art with all this background whatever we have done till now you have to keep it in um, in you know like at at the ready as we now dive into trying to understand that little sentence that thou art you see he will say now text number 140 43 i'll just read that and stop abhyam adhyaropa apavada abhyam tattvam padartha shodhanam api siddham bhavati by this process of superimposition and de superimposition the precise significance of that and thou is clearly determined that's what's going to happen now um by whatever we have done we'll see next in the next class by whatever we have done till now in vedanta sar it's all this is a traditional way of teaching what is vedanta that thou art i don't understand all right let us start then these are the qualifications of the student Uh, this is the purpose of vedanta um, these are the texts and this is the goal the result of vedanta remember fourfold qualifications before that was the fourfold preliminaries um, anubandha chatushtam then the sadhana chatushtam was there then the student goes to the teacher the teacher says i'm going to teach you by the method of superimposition and de superimposition so from superimposition he starts with brahman and works his way up to this entire universe and de superimposition today what we did starting with this entire universe he goes works his way back to brahman so what so now we will we will go back to tattvamasi that thou art then you will begin to see the the great the grand picture which will emerge the real meaning of tattvamasi first of all we will understand it in our you know like philosophically what is what it what is it saying a clear understanding of that and then we will see how to take that to realization to become enlightened it sounds very complicated but actually it's pretty pretty straightforward it's all about you nothing except you um, it's the entire thing is directed towards the real you okay let me just quickly take a look at the activity in the chat and then we'll stop um pravir babu says clay pot example in aparoksha no but excellent that is the classic example of superimposition de superimposition i'm not going into that but at the end of aparokshanubhuti the clay pot example shankaracharya talks about that is exactly superimposition de superimposition patrick is saying what is it about the mind that causes it to get impure by contemplating impermanent and causes it to get pure when contemplating the eternal the purification of the mind is accomplished first by karma yoga purification of the mind concentration <laughs> which is meditation and then by removal of ignorance through knowledge so the threefold purification one is purification of the vasanas the likes and dislikes one is concentration of mind there is removal of the distractions and finally removal of ignorance so we about what is the di- difference between vive uh, vikara and parinama no difference the same thing here it means the same thing peter says doesn't advaita vedanta claim that brahman creates the universe out of brahman itself like a spider spins a web 
Doesn't this contradict the Vivatta claim of these different versions of Advaita Vedanta? No. So the Upanishad itself uses terms like, like a spider spins its web, like from the earth, herbs and shrubs emerge, like from the living body, uh, hair emerges. This is from the Mundaka Upanishad. So that's just a, a poetic device of, of trying to explain what's going on. So if you investigate that further, this is the, the final philosophical position. So, so why does it claim that it's like a spider spinning a web? Because only for pointing out one thing there, the, the point in that example is just as the web is nothing other than the spider, there was no external material out of which the spider created a web. There's nothing other than Brahman from which Brahman creates the universe. Brahman from itself creates the universe. Uh, is that creation real like the spider? Is it like really uh, spinning a web? No. It's more like a dream. So, yeah, so that is the source of Advaita. But to explain it further, it, it doesn't stop with the Mundaka Upanishad. There are commentaries, sub-commentaries down to this, all this you know, detail worked out. This is the final form in which Advaita is. Dimitri, knowledge operates on objects. How, how Brahman can be known? Wait, that's the last question to be asked. How do we know this, all this then? How, how can we realize ourselves as Brahman? How will that thou art, Tattva Masi, actually work? We will see. But we have to wait till the end of, almost the end of this, this course, and uh, this, this text. Punitaji asks, God can be seen, but not Brahman, because one is at our jiva level of reality, other is not. God can be seen because name and form are associated with God. Uh, Brahman is, there's no name and form. Brahman is not an object. If you see anything, then that is an object to the consciousness itself. Brahman is that consciousness. Even better, let me put it this way. Swami Bhuteshanji says in one place, Brahma gyan hai, Brahma darshan hai na. Brahman, there is Brahma jnana. Brahma jnana is possible. What we are looking for is knowledge of Brahman or realization of Brahman. Brahma darshan means seeing of Brahman. Seeing of Brahman is not possible. You can see things. You can see the world or if you are a mystic, if you are if you have a very pure mind and a lot of spiritual practice, then you will see divine forms. If you, it may not be a form. You cannot, maybe I will not see an actual form, but you can feel a divine presence, the presence of God, for example. All of those are mystic experiences. So it's that still seeing. Notice, you are still the experiencer. Who felt the presence of God? Brother, Brother Lawrence felt the presence of God. Who sees the divine form of the mother? Sri Ramakrishna sees. But all of them, it's consciousness which is experiencing that. That consciousness cannot be experienced as an object. So Brahma Jnana, not Brahma Darshan. But here Brahman means ultimate reality. Ultimate reality can be known. How? That, as Dimitri asked, that's also a very specialized form of knowledge. Only known as yourself. Your real self, capital S. And that we will see later. In detailed descriptions. Um, There's a wonderful discussion of the very psychology of enlightenment. What exactly happens in Advaitic enlightenment? Those things will be discussed later on. Rick says, aside from offering the veiling and projecting qualities of Maya, does Vedanta elaborate on the mechanics of apparent manifestation? Yes, all the mechanics we discussed, from the, the projection of the five elements to the combination of the five elements, the creation of the, the Vijnana Maya, the Mano Maya, the um, Prana Maya, so life and mind and intellect are created. Then the physical universe is created, creation of physical bodies. And the, so that is the, and remember, all of this Vedanta does not take it seriously. Even the cause of this God, that also Vedanta does not take seriously. Ultimately, it is all resolved back to one absolute reality. So the mechanics of this, Vedanta borrows from existing cosmology at that time. Sankhyan, mostly the Sankhyan cosmology. If you say all that is outdated, I am going to depend more on, uh, on modern cosmology. Advaita Vedanta would be the only one of the ancient systems which would be comfortable with it. 
which will say, fine, explain it whichever way you like. Explain it with your better explanation by modern cosmology. Um, does Maya itself possess, if Maya is an inherent quality of Brahman, Maya is not an inherent quality of Brahman. Maya is an appearance in Brahman. If Maya were an inherent quality of Brahman, then Brahman would be qualified. Saguna Brahman, which is Ramanuja's uh, perspective. Vishishtabdvaita. So all these quotations you have give, given here, so those are um, in Advaita Vedanta, those would be taken at the level of uh, the apparent, the Vavaharika, transactional reality. They, are, they, they apply to Saguna Brahman, Ishwara, not to Nirguna Brahman, the ultimate reality. Alpana Chatterjee says, knowledge will remove the ignorance with, within transactional reality. Maybe that explains why one is not realized even after intellectual understanding. No, these things will be cleared up later on. Knowledge will remove ignorance in transactional reality. Absolutely. Ignorance and knowledge both are within transactional reality. Vavaharika Satyam. In, in the Paramarthika Satyam, absolute level, there is neither ignorance nor knowledge. Only Brahman is there. So real enlightenment, realization, all of that is possible only at the transactional level. So the problem is at this level. Solution is also at this level. Girish, is Spinoza's pantheism similar to Vishishtadvaita? In, um, in a very superficial way, I would say from, from, this, from a distance, in a painting in broad strokes, um, and on the whole, let us say, yes, similar to Vishishtadvaita. But I'm sure Vishishtadvaita scholars and Spinoza scholars will immediately object. But definitely, there's a, a clear difference between Spinoza's pantheism and uh, Advaita. The closest we have in, in modern Western terminology is panentheism, panentheism, where the universe is an appearance in that absolute reality. Michael Bird says, once I realize my true absolute nature, I feel as if I could meditate on the bliss of that knowledge for the rest of my life without the need to pursue any action, transaction, illusional world. So is there any greater expectation of purpose behind the purpose I define for myself or realize jiva in the transaction illusion? For example, does the want to help others in pain come from an absolute perspective? Because all is Brahman, all is not and only Brahman is, or is it coming from a transactional perspective? Because I'm getting lost in the illusion play of suffering due to my ignorance. Whichever way you want to put it. See, what happens is, um, this, these concepts are set up. Jivan Mukti and Videha Mukti. We want to get become enlightened. And uh, Advaita Vedanta says, here, not after death, here in this life, you can become enlightened and still be living in this body. You can inhabit this world of appearance and you can be an enlightened and free person. And that's called a Jivan Mukta. At the end of the body, um, because of Prarabdha Karma, as Prarabdha Karma is exhausted, this body dies and you attain what is called Videha Mukti, um, the freedom after the dissolution of the body. But even these are not ultimate concepts. These are also steps. This is not ultimately true. One sadhu in Uttarakhand, he was asked, so isn't it true that Jivan Mukti is the goal? The freedom while living is the goal and not Videha Mukti. Videha Mukti is, of course, it will come by itself, but right now we must try to attain that if we are free, we are Brahman, this, this realization should come and we should live like that. And that sadhu said very interestingly in Hindi, he said, um, Jivan Mukti, Videha Mukti, dono hi amangal hai, tyag dijiye. Both are not auspicious, both are not useful. Now you should let go of both concepts. What does it mean? That's the highest goal in Advaita Vedanta. What do you mean give them up? Give them up means from, say, for example, from Shankaracharya's perspective. What does he sing? Nirvana Shatakam. Na dharmo, na jartho, na kamo, na moksha. Not even moksha. What kind of moksha, what, what kind of mukti or realization does he want? Does he want realization in this very life? Does he want realization after death? I mean, the liberation after death, liberation in life? Nothing. He is ever liberated because he says, Chidananda Rupa Hashiboham. I am of the nature of 
existence consciousness bliss i am the nature of shiva is shiva jivan mukta or videya mukta neither so those are um, very useful concepts and targets to pra- to pursue at uh, the, the way we are moving but remember even now itself you should remember you are brahman and from from brahman from the absolute perspective there is neither jivan mukti nor videya mukti the body is an appearance so freedom in the body freedom after the death of the body obviously these are constructs yeah and then how do you, what so what do you do from the perspective of the body you can live your life a life of blessedness and healthfulness you know people around you you can engage in multifarious social action you can engage in spiritual teaching or you may not you may simply withdraw and there were great masters even now there are i'm quite sure who remain who choose to remain completely incognito and remain absorbed in uh, in the contemplation of brahman that's what vivekananda the first did you know when uh, sri ramakrishna asked him what do you want he said i just want to remain absorbed in that ultimate reality once in a while i might come down for a snack but otherwise i'll remain remain and sri ramakrishna scolded him luckily for us so that we get all this benefit but uh, what he said initially that's not wrong uh, if somebody wants to remain absorbed in the bliss of god what could be higher that's that's, all, that's also fine what's the composition of time with respect to the five elements you know i was thinking about that rodrigo is asking uh, from a modern perspective if you are talking about space akasha uh, uh, my very vague knowledge of physics tells me that space and time are the same thing right so if you're talking about akasha you're already including kala though space is uh, time is not uh, distinctly mentioned here in this list so chitra is asking swami ji you have mentioned that in vivartha brahman the world are the same level of reality no they are not they are not in vivartha they are of different levels of reality right so same level of reality is parinama milk converted into yogurt seed becomes a sapling same level of reality but um snake the rope appearing is the snake rope is of uh, vyavaharika reality and the snake is of pratibhasika brahman appearing is the world brahman is of paramarthic reality the absolute level of reality the world is transactional reality vyavaharika there are different levels of reality and therefore knowledge works can you connect the two why knowledge will work if there are different levels of reality you can correct it go from a lower level of reality to a higher level of reality or deeper level of reality whichever way you put it by an act of knowledge one can move from pratibhasika to vyavaharika you can wake up from a dream dream is pratibhasika you can wake up to the waking world you can you can correct the illusory snake and and find the rope by knowledge from pratibhasika to vyavaharika and by vedantic knowledge one can move from vyavaharika to to the paramarthika but to brahman they are of different levels of reality shrinivas says uriya baba said this about both being inauspicious correct correct this is uriya baba actually who was the guru of not guru but he inspired Uh, akhanda and saraswati very much so i went to uriya baba's ashram in uh, in um, um, in in vrindavan and no there are very few people left there just a small group a few brahmacharis and so he was a great great uh, traditional monk in those days he used to live in vrindavan but a very staunch non dualist so some, sometimes many of the stories i tell you in hindi are actually trans, are, are actually from from this monk uriya baba because he was from orissa he was called udiya baba so both being inauspicious the jivan mukti and videya mukti does not mean they are wrong remember both being inauspicious from the perspective of what perspective of the ultimate truth brahman which is nitya mukta ever free so free while living free after death all these are with respect to the body and 
fine as far as we are concerned we we should move forward in that way and our goal should be to become jivan mukta but, but when we do that we will realize we are we are brahman which is always free so both jivan mukta and videha mukta ultimately have no meaning for us from the perspective of aham brahmasmi i am brahman all right let us conclude here Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Rupa Namastu